Hi everyone. Well, the sky has finally cleared across my region and tonight in my excitement, I'm going to open up two rigs. Number one is the big C11 uh, telescope, the Celestron 11 inch HD. And with that, I'm going to go planet shopping. The other telescope and rig is over here. That is the Orion ED80. It is a wider field of view and with that, my goal tonight is to capture the Hart Nebula. It's up over there in the Northeast, and I have never been able to capture this nebula, but I'm gonna try some different tricks tonight, and hopefully things will work out. Hi, I'm Pat Prokop, and welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. The Celestron 11-inch Edge HD telescope is sitting on the Celestron uh, CGX mount. And this mount will carry this scope with no problems whatsoever. Now, connected to the scope, I'm going to have this computer right here. This is a mini computer, and I have the same type of computer uh, going to be on the other rig as well. So I'm going to be remoting into two different computers. And uh, this is a full-fledged Windows, well, this one's Windows 11. The other one's Windows 10. And you know I prefer Windows 10 over Windows, that's another story. Anyway, uh, I'm going to have uh, this rig here connected to this computer, and I'll remote from it upstairs in my office. Now, the, uh, the main thing for this uh, planet hunting, I'm going to be going after Saturn, Neptune, Jupiter, Uranus, and Mars. I'm going to see if I can get all of those tonight from the Heavenly Backyard. And I'm going to be using, using the new ZWO ASI 585 planetary camera, even though I've been finding out you can use this for deep space as well. Now, on this, I have two other devices. First of all, I have a UV IR cut filter on the front. That's very important to use with this type of a camera since it is so sensitive. The uh, uh, infrared and the UV light coming in from the uh, sky could interfere with the sensor. So you need to cut those out. And I do have a, a UV IR cut filter. And the other one is this little device here. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm put it this way. It's got these two little knobs here. This is called an ADC, an atmospheric dispersion corrector. This will help with the flickering of the different color lights as the light from the planets pass through our atmosphere and that disperses the light, hence the uh, dispersion. So this is the um, uh, device that will help correct that dispersion. Hopefully this will work. So this is for telescope number one, the C11. I'm going planet shopping with this one right here. All right, the ED80, this is a 80 millimeter uh, telescope with a focal ratio of F6. It's got a focal length of 480 millimeters. However, I'm gonna be using a reducer on this, the Orion, uh, 0.8 reducer, and so that should take me down to a F ratio of 4.8. I believe that's going to take me down to about 400 uh, millimeters. I, I got the uh, focal lengths uh, right over there. Uh, you can see them right here. The, the exact numbers uh, that I'll be using with this. Of course, I have the guide scope on top of the uh, telescope itself. I have a Pegasus um, power hub over here where I connect all my connections, uh, USBs uh, from the uh, telescope and the computer and the guide scope and the camera into this little hub here. Also, it has two different ports for my dew straps. Here in the southeast, dew is always a major issue, even though it won't be as bad tonight because that dew point is really dropped with this dry air coming in. And anyway, still, I'm gonna be getting dew. So this controls the dew heater and also has a, a thermometer on it with a hygrometer. And that measures the uh, temperature and the humidity and with the humidity, you can get the dew point. And so it knows when to turn on the dew straps and how much power to give the dew straps so to keep the dew from forming on the lens. The camera that I'll be using is the ZWO071MC. Uh, it's a one-shot color camera. And uh, with that, I'm gonna have a filter on it. And this filter right here, I have it in the filter wheel, is the Optolong L Enhance. Uh, this is going to be filtering out a lot of the stray lights up in the sky. So, you know, the Hart Nebula is in that direction there. And you, you know what's in that direction as well? Yeah, the city of Savannah. And it gives off a lot of light up in the sky, causing a lot of light pollution. Hopefully, this L-Enhanced 
uh, filter will knock out a lot of that light pollution. Uh, this is a filter that only allows the area of the hydrogen alpha uh, or the red region of the spectrum and the oxygen three region of the spectrum, which is more or less the dark greens into the blue color light. Hopefully that will give me some good images of the heart nebula. So that's the goal for tonight. But boy, that sky is so blue. I am so happy to see this blue sky. I haven't seen a blue sky like this and gosh, I have to go way back in my mind. I think it's been in June or so before the sky I remember as being this blue. So the seeing should be very good for tonight. Let me shut up and get into the works here so you can enjoy uh, the video. And you know, let's go upstairs now and look at the remotes uh, because I'm going to turn it on after it gets dark. So let's wait until it gets dark and I'll see you then. Also, things don't always go as planned. Just as I finished cutting the outdoor videos, a band of clouds started moving in during the late afternoon going into the early evening hours. I was a little disturbed at that because the sky was so blue. But these clouds eventually did pass through and by 11 o'clock the sky had once again cleared off. So here is the nighttime sky looking to the north-northeast at 10 o'clock tonight uh, looking through Stellarium and there is where the Heart Nebula is located and uh, with that you'll find it uh, between Perseus, Camelopardus, and uh, Cassiopeia and uh, uh, this is the view I'm going to be looking at and again as I mentioned earlier right over here is the city of Savannah so I'm looking at uh, through all these lights right here coming up with the light pollution. But, but hopefully the L enhanced filter will knock out a lot of that city light pollution. So here we are in Nina and this is the uh, view that my scope should be able to pick up. Uh, I have it set at the uh, pixel size for the 071 camera, the ZWOASI 071 MC Pro and the pixel size being 4.8 microns. The, uh, the uh, telescope itself is down to 400 millimeters, so uh, the focal length. So this is what I should be able to get for the heart and nebula. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I'll be able to capture this. Well, let's go get it. So here we have the planets, and at 10 o'clock tonight, Saturn is almost at the zenith. There's south right here. And uh, it has just cleared my trees. Uh, the tree line is right about here. And uh, Neptune is right over here. That'll be coming up behind Saturn, a little bit higher up in the sky, so I should be able to see that as well. And then following that will be the planet Jupiter. Now, let's go ahead and forward time here and go to about two, uh, around two or three o'clock in the morning. And there we got Jupiter now over here uh, at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, the moon and Uranus are right next to each other. So that's gonna possess a problem in getting Uranus. I might have to wait another night. Farther to the east is the planet Mars. Mars has been steadily growing brighter and it's really accelerating its magnitude right now. Almost at minus one, it is getting bright and brighter each night. Mars is already a bright, ruddy red up in the morning sky. When it comes to astrophotography, sometimes it just doesn't work. Things go from bad to worse. When I connected the 585 camera, look what happened. It went crazy. Uh, it just wouldn't work. And so I contacted my vendor and they said, well, you are one of the lucky ones that got a bad camera and I need to send it back. So they're gonna take care of that. Nonetheless, I had a backup and the backup was the Altair Astro 183C and that has a pixel size of 2.4, so a little bit smaller pixel size, which results in a bigger picture. So I was able to get the planets even though I had a failure of the main camera. So here it is coming up to about one o'clock in the morning, just shy of one o'clock, and there's the planet Jupiter right now and looking at the uh, conditions with the um, CPWI, the uh, Celestron mount, uh, there's the meridian right there. Saturn's already pa passed the meridian. And here's Jupiter right now. Neptune's right there. And the Moon and Uranus are right over here. Mars is just beginning to rise out in the east.
let's take a look at things right now and see how they're going. It's now a little bit after two o'clock in the morning, 10 minutes after two o'clock in the morning, and there is little Mars. Uh, it's getting very bright in the sky, but still a small planet, and uh, it's, it's, it's there. So let's zoom in a little bit on it. Uh, it's very low in the sky right now, so it's almost impossible to focus. That's the best focus I can get so far on it. I'm gonna have to let it wait till it gets a little bit higher up in the sky. Uh, looking at the um, Nina aspect of it, the position of Mars right now, um, there it was in Nina when I uh, plate solved it, but um, orbitals right here, there it is. It's very low in the atmosphere, only 30 degrees above the horizon. Really, it's not going to do much good until it gets about 45 degrees up or so. Now, when it gets at a maximum altitude, it's going to be up to 70, uh, almost 80 degrees, 79 degrees. Uh, however, that's in the pre-dawn hours. But this is only September, and Mars is going to be at its most brilliant, not until December. So uh, we got a way to go yet for that. So Mars is beginning to come into view at the moment. Let's see what else is going on with the other side of the equation. Uh, rig number two, actually it's telescope number three, uh, the Heart Nebula, uh, we're working on that. But there's the nebula right there. Well, it's a little bit after three o'clock in the morning now. Here's the Heart Nebula still coming in and the, uh, as predicted, the guiding has settled down considerably down to 0.68 uh, arc seconds or 0.15 pixels. So yeah, it's coming along pretty good now. And let's take a little close up view on that. And yeah, look at how round the stars are. These are five minute exposure. So I'm very pleased with this so far, except for the fact the moon is so bright out there. See right there. What about the planets? How are we doing with the planets? Let's get this out of the way here. There's Mars right now, I'm capturing Mars, uh, just finishing up a 5,000 frame capture right there. And I'm doing okay, I got 26 frames per second coming in on it. Of course, Mars is such a small planet. It's higher up in the sky now, and because of that, I'm getting a little less um, craziness going on. It's still dancing considerably. Let's take a look at uh, Nina, see where it is right now. And there it is, is this Mars, yeah. And uh, it's still, you know, it's getting up there 43, almost 44 degrees above the horizon right now. Well, thanks for hanging in there with me throughout the nighttime hours, you know, four o'clock in the morning before I finally gave up the ghost. But anyway, I, I did get some good results. Well, the planets came out okay, considering the fact that I was not able to use the 14-bit camera, but uh, with the backup, the Altair Astro 12-bit uh, camera did a very good job, the 183C. You know, it was such a clear day. The little clouds came in during the evening hours, tried to spoil things, but the sky did clear off throughout the remainder of the nighttime hours. And you know, I just had to take advantage of this brief uh, period of clear weather conditions. Hence the operation of two rigs at the same time. The Heart Nebula came out really good. Let's take a look at that and the rest of Mars and you know, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders like Mars, like the Heart Nebula, and they're all in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.